What is up YouTube? It's Ben with Bathroom Brews MTG here. And to wrap up the year, I decided to do a little tier list on how fun I think all of the face commanders are that were released this year. Let's kick things off with Admiral Brass Unsinkable. He's from the Pirates Precon from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It's five mana for a 3-3 legendary creature human pirate. When they ETB, you mill four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may return target pirate creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. It is base power tough as 4-4. It gains haste until end of turn. Kind of reminds me of Scarab God with the finality counters and getting a 4-4. I mean, Scarab God technically exiles the creature and then you just get a 4-4 copy of it. What's great with finality counters, though, you can actually remove them. So either Hex Parasite or Vampire Hex Mage, I think. Those are two ways in black to remove counters. Also, the Oozlets can be kind of fun with it. Because if you have any finality counters go on the Oozlith, you can put those onto other players' creatures. I think this will be fun. I might move up to very fun later on, but right now I'm going to leave it at fun. It's a Grixis Pirate Reanimator deck. That seems pretty cool. Next up is a Kinthea, Hand of Erebos. This is a 5 mana, 4 4 legendary creature enchantment demigod with Menace. Other enchantment creatures you control have Menace. Whenever they hit ETB or attack, exile up to one target non aura enchantment card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 3 3 black zombie creature token in addition to its other types. I love graveyard decks. This is an Abzan Enchantress deck that's a little bit more interesting than the usual ones. I do like how they've been adding attack triggers on a lot of commanders, and you'll see that a lot during this year, which I think is just absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'm going to put this under fun. I think it's less fun than Grixis Pirates, but there's some really funny things you can do with like out of time to phase out every single creature, including your commander. That's great. Next up is Bright Palm Soul Awakener. This is a 4 mana 4 3 legendary creature Fox Shaman. Backup 1. Whenever this creature attacks, double the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature. That creature can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less this turn. So this card I actually definitely overlooked in my initial rankings of like uh, the pre-cons for the Brothers War, I think this was. Or no, March of the Machines. MOC, I can see at the bottom there. I think this is actually a really strong commander, and I think it would be really fun. There's a lot of really great hardened scales effects, especially in Naya colors. You have Uzalith, the new one. Kami Whispered Hopes, actual hardened scales, Lazel from Baldur's Gate. I'm missing some. But yeah, there's a bunch of those effects, so you can double the counters really easily. I'm going to put this here. I think it's fun. They, I don't think there's be really that any that aren't that fun. Most of these commanders this year have been pretty powerful and like just interesting and I think a little bit more niche than usual, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think having them a little bit more specific means you could do really cool things with them compared to like Chulain or Chalin, however you say it, Cullen. Compared to something like a Trax that's kind of open-ended, but kind of meh, like generic. Next up is Brimaz, Blight of Oreskos. This is a four mana, three, four Phyrexian cat. Whenever you cast a Phyrexian creature or an artifact spell, incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. Remember, incubate is you make those little Phyrexian eggs that are zero zeros and are face down with X plus one plus one counters, and you pay too many, you flip them up and they become creatures. At the beginning of each end step, if a Phyrexian died under your control this turn, proliferate. My friend actually has this deck, and I think it's a very fun commander. It's really cool seeing it. I love the incubate. I love that mechanic just in general. In limited, I really liked it. I love it in commander. And it's at the beginning of each end step instead of at the beginning of only your end step. So there's like a cool uh, aristocrat style deck with it. I really enjoy it. Next up is Calveno, First of the Blessed. This is from the Vampire Precon from uh, Lost Caverns. It's a three mana 2-2 two, two Vampire Cleric. Whenever you attack, target attacking vampire that isn't a demon becomes a demon into a in addition to its other types. It gains when this creature dies. Draw a card and create a 4-3 black, white, and black vampire demon creature token with flying. That's a lot of text. So whenever you attack, so it doesn't have to be this vampire, just any vampire, so even like a token, it becomes a demon, and then when it dies, you get a 4-3. So I was actually really low on this commander originally, but I'm thinking about it more now, and I think that could be pretty fun, because you could take... I think my biggest issue is that it's only one vampire a turn. I wish it was more of them, but that might get a little too broken. But I wish it was like whenever you attack an opponent with one or more vampires or whatever. So if you attack three people, you're incentivized to make three demons. Overall, I'm going to put this under... I think it's less fun than Enchantress, but I still think it's a fun commander. Next up is Commodore Guff. It's a four mana legendary Planeswalker Guff that comes with five loyalty. At the beginning of your end step, put a loyalty counter on another target Planeswalker you control. 
Its plus one is create a 1-1 one, one red wizard creature token with tap, add a red, spend this mana to only cast a planeswalker spell. Its minus three is you draw X cards and Commodore Guff deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of planeswalkers you control, and obviously Commodore Guff could be your commander. This was part of the Commander Masters pre-cons that weren't very well received, mostly because of their price. I think they were very well built, and we got my buddy picked me one up on Black Friday, or I think it was 50 USD. And that's reasonably priced for these. It's been one of my favorite decks. I picked up a Comet for it. Guff is honestly just a pretty fun commander in my book. I'm gonna put it under wanna build because I actually do wanna build it. And by that, I mean, I have the deck. And it was, I think on my top 10 list of commanders this year. Next up is Davros, Dalek creator. See, I didn't say Dalek this time, so you can't come at me in the comments. It's a four mana, three, four legendary artifact creature, alien scientist, Menace. At the beginning of your end step, create a three, three black Dalek artifact creature token with menace if an opponent lost three or more life this turn. Then each opponent who lost three or more life this turn faces a villainous choice. Either you draw or they discard. So my friends have this deck. I'm going to put this a uh, very fun here. I actually really enjoy playing against it. It helps speeds up the game because you're constantly getting attacked and damage is constantly being dealt. Uh, the villainous choice is interesting. Generally, you should just be discarding a card instead of having them draw a card. And to learn that we don't want to give three people, you know, we don't want to give someone three extra cards. Overall, I I think it's a good commander. I think it's fun. If you want to build a weird artifact burn deck, even just picking this up by itself and like impact tremors and woody roast masters and reckless fire weavers is a great way of doing it. Up is Elevir of the Wild Court. This is a four mana four four human knight. Whenever they enter the battlefield or attack, you create a virtuous roll token attached to another target creature. So virtuous rolls, it's they get plus one plus one for each other enchantment or each enchantment you control. And whenever an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. I feel like I missed that line of text when I play this commander. This was on my top 10 and I really like this deck. I don't remember also drawing a card. I could be misremembering because I haven't played the deck in a few weeks, but I love this card. I'm going to put this here. Auras is really fun, and this is like a weird go wide aura deck instead of a go tall aura deck, because you can't put a virtuous roll on it, and you can't put more than one roll token on each creature. But I think it's really cool. Next up is Aowen Shield Maiden. She's a five mana, five four legendary creature human knight with first strike. Beginning of combat on your turn. If another human entered the battlefield under your control this turn, create two 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 red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste. Then if you control six or more humans, draw a card. I have this pre-con, and honestly, I it is one of my favorite pre-cons of the year. I need to play it more. I haven't played it in like probably two or three months. It is insanely fun and insanely powerful. It's so much of a card advantage just in the commander from just doing what you want to do, which is playing humans. Next up is Frodo Adventurous Hobbit, and it's partnered with Sam Loyal Attendant. There's a two mana one three with Vigilance. Whenever it attacks, if you gain three or more life this turn, the ring tempts you. Then if Frodo is your ring bear, the ring and the ring has tempted you two or more times this game, you draw a card. Then you have Sam Loyal Attendant, which is a three mana two four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you make a food token. Activated abilities of food you control cost one less to activate. This is part of the Lord of the Rings food deck. I love this partner pair so much. I almost want to build them. We already have the deck in our group, so I haven't. But if they ever move or stop playing the deck, I'll just borrow their deck, honestly. Yeah, it's definitely up here. Next up is Gadriel, Elven Queen. She's a 4 mana 4 5 legendary creature elf noble. She's Will of the Council. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if another elf entered the battlefield under your control this turn, starting with you, each player votes for Dominion or Guidance. If Dominion gets more votes, the ring tempts you, and you put a counter on your ring bearer. If Guidance gets more votes or the vote is tied, draw a card. Honestly, this is the first kind of fun commander. This precon felt very discombobulated, it didn't feel focused, it was the worst of the bunch by a while. Not really into this is Simic Elves. You vote and you're always going to get like a counter on something, I guess. But I don't know, it just doesn't really do it for me. Next up is Gimbal, Gremlin Prodigy. This is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four legendary creature Gremlin Artificer. Artifact creatures you control trample. At the beginning of your end step, you create a 0-0 red Gremlin Artifact creature token. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is a number of differently named artifact tokens you control. This was actually really fun. I'm gonna put it under very fun. I have this deck. I need to tweak it a little bit. I was struggling with it in the last half of the year. 
It could be I got Bane of Progress three times in one game. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like this commander. Also, it's important to note that even if you don't have any other artifact tokens out, when the gremlin enters, it does check for itself. So you'll always get at least a 1-1 one, one, uh, gremlin artifact token, which is sick. Next up is Hawkball of the Surging Soul. This is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three Merfolk Scout. At the beginning of combat on your turn, each Merfolk you control explores. And then whenever it attacks, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you don't, draw a card. Sorry, whenever Hawkball attacks, it's not whenever you attack, but whenever this creature attacks. This is a really fun commander. My friend has this deck. They've beat us with it plenty of times, even without like a ton of upgrades to it. Explore is just powerful card advantage. This card advantage, I will fight you if you think otherwise. Yeah, it's a good Merfolk uh, typal kindred tribal commander, however, whatever word you want to use. Next up is Ixhel, Scion of Atraxa. It's a four mana, two five legendary creature Phyrexian Angel, has flying, vigilance, and toxic two, and has corrupted. So at the beginning of your end step, each opponent who has three or more poison counters exiles the top card of their library face down. You may look at it and play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though we're made of any color to cast those spells. I think this is a pretty fun commander. I'm gonna put it at the tail end of fun just because people don't like toxic. I personally don't care about toxic. I think it's a fine mechanic. Infect is like a little annoying in commander, but you can just kill the infect player if it's that big of an issue. Plus with this, you actually don't want to necessarily kill people with Infect, you just want them to have some poison counter so you can steal their stuff. Next up is Kostla the Broken Halo. This is a 6 mana 5-4 legendary creature angel ally with Convoke, Flying Vigilance, and Haste. And whenever you cast another spell that has Convoke, scry 2 and draw a card. Top end of kind of fun. I think they are an interesting commander. There's just not a lot of Convoke spells even with March of the Machine. So I don't think the deck is quite there. I think with another few sets of with Convoke, I think this commander will like end up being really powerful. I just think right now, I'm very mad on it. Next up is Nayla, Sun's Vanguard. This is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three legendary creature human rebel. Attacking tokens you control of double strike. That's pretty cool. And then whenever one or more tokens you control attack a player, exile the top card of your library. During any turn you attack with a token, you may play that card. So you get to, A, it's card advantage in a Boros commander, and it's impulse kind of card advantage. But even if you don't play it that turn, as long as you attack with even like a 1-1, one, one, you do get to play those cards. That's that's really cool. Whenever one or more tokens you control, attack a player. But yeah, so you can attack three players, so you get three cards a turn with this. That's great. And they have double strikes, so if, even if they're a little bit beefy, they'll be kind of hard to block. I'll put this like in the middle of fun. I was trying to brew this commander for a little while, but I couldn't quite get it to where I wanted it. I think there is a really good deck out there with this, and I'm excited to see it in the wild hole. Now next up is Pant Laza, Sun Favored. This is a 5 mana 4-4 legendary creature dino. Whenever it or another dinosaur ETBs under your control, you may discover X where X is that creature's toughness. Do this only once each turn. All right, this is my favorite commander, second favorite commander of the year. And I know it just came out a little bit more recently. However, this deck is insanely fun. It's so Timmy. Every game I've played it, it never feels like I'm not doing anything. That's a lie. There was one game where I kept a four lander and then drew no lands for like four turns. It was not pleasant. Uh, but you discover so much with this deck, especially when you get some, especially with some good upgrades like sneak attack I put in the deck. It's so powerful because you can sneak attack in on the end step but after the trigger would have resolved for sneak attack and then you can sacrifice it. It is, it is a wonderful deck. If you can find this anywhere, I would definitely pick it up. It's really, really fun. Next up is Rose Tyler, and we'll partner with the 10th Doctor. A two mana, two, two legendary creature human. It gets plus one, plus one for each time counter on it. And then whenever it attacks, put a time counter on it for each spend card you own and each other permanent you control with a time counter on it as Doctor's Companion. Like I said, this is normally partnered with the 10th Doctor which is a five mana three five. Whenever you attack, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. Put three time counters on it. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Then you can pay seven, time travel three times, activate only as a sorcery. Time travel means you either take, either put on. Time travel means you either, when you time travel, you either remove or add suspend counters. You're doing that three times, so you can either remove three suspend counters or add three suspend counters to something. This is a really powerful duo. My friend did the 10th Doctor and Clara, and it I didn't like it as much. I think the entire table didn't like it. He took like an hour turn and really couldn't win. But with Rose Tyler, 
it's a creature that gets big and lets you crack in there, and I think that's really important to have an actual win condition with this commander. Overall, I think it's pretty fun. I'm going to try not to let the salt of an hour-long turn at the end of the night, like, change my rating here. It's not their fault. It was, you know, I think the commander is pretty fun. Uh, definitely more fun than a lot of these. I'll put this, like, eh, right in the middle here. I think that's fine. And the next up is Sarah Jane Smith. So it's a two mana, two one legendary creature, human detective. Whenever you cast a historic spell, investigate. The build only triggers once each turn. A historic spell is an artifact, saga, or legendary spell, I believe. I might be missing one there. This is an artifact, saga, or legendary. And then Doctor's Companion. This is usually partnered with the fourth Doctor. So the fourth Doctor is a four mana, four, four. What great flavor. Legendary creature, Time Lord Doctor. You may look at the top part of your library at any time. And then once each turn, you may play a historic land or cast a historic spell from the top of your library. When you do, you make a food. These cards, you'll one of them you'll make a food. The other one, you'll make a clue. Probably really good with the Academy Manufacturer. Overall, I haven't actually seen this deck played. I'm going to put this under kind of fun. Only because I haven't really seen this deck it's historic matters, but you're making food and clues. I don't know. I feel like there are more interesting things you more interesting things you can do. Next up is Sauron, Lord of the Rings. This is an eight mana nine nine Avatar Horror. When you cast this spell, amass orcs five, mill five cards, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it has trample. Whenever a commander and opponent controls dies, the ring temp you. I'm a little. I don't know where to put this because you just cast it and you do a bunch of things, but the commander hasn't really impressed me I, I don't know i'm gonna put this under top end of kind of fun it's like a grixis ramp commander that does a whole bunch of things when you cast it but i don't know how often you're gonna cast it more than like once or twice i don't know it just doesn't really do it for me next up is sadar jabari of zalfir this is a four mana four three legendary creature human knight it has eminence Whenever you attack with one or more knights, if they're in your command zone or on the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card, so you loot. As flying, first strike, and then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, return target knight creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is a really fun commander. I'll put this up here. Eminence is still broken, even though it's definitely a little bit weaker here. You know, it's not Edgar Markov or uh, Anala, but this is a pretty powerful effect. But I think it's in, it's more interesting than those because while it is kind of card advantage because you're drawing the discard, it is card advantage in a way. Card selection, which I'm going to consider card advantage here for argument's sake. And then you also get to reanimate something whenever it deals combat damage to a player. If you can get this double strike, which it should be pretty easy to do, you get two knights back. But yeah, I think that's a pretty fun commander. Next up is Sliver Grave Mother. <laughs> this is a five mana, six, six legendary creature Sliver. The legend rule doesn't apply to Slivers you control. Each sliver card in your graveyard has Encore X, where X is mana value, and this is Encore 5. So Encore is cool because you get a bunch of token copies of a card, then you do have to sacrifice them. I think they exile themselves. I'd have to look at the reminders text. But if you can get something like the Sundial of the Infinite to just end the turn before you have to sacrifice them to Encore, you get to keep them. Same thing with like Obeka. But I don't think this is a fun commander. Um... I mean, Encore's cool, and Slivers are cool. I'm gonna put this at the tail end of kind of fun. I don't know, this doesn't, just doesn't do it for me as a Sliver commander. I feel like the first Sliver is way more fun and way more powerful. I mean, I'm also just a Timmy who loves cascading, so there is that, but I don't know. This doesn't really do it for me. Maybe there's some broken combo I'm not seeing, and if there is, definitely let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your experience with this deck if you've played it. Next up is Tegwil, Duke of Splendor. A 3 mana 2 3 legendary creature fairy noble with flying and death touch. Other fairies you control get plus one plus one. And then whenever another fairy you control dies, you draw a card and lose a life. It's like a fairies aristocrats deck. I'll put this. I also put this here, I think. This is a fine commander. I think a fairies deck would be really cool, but I don't think this is the commander I'd want to use for it. It's a fairy lord that cares about fairies dying. I don't know. It seems a little disjointed. Probably great in the 99, but I have no interest in using this as a fairy commander. Next up is the 13th Doctor. This is actually my favorite commander of the year with Yasmin. This is a 3 mana 2 2 legendary creature Time Lord Doctor. as Paradox, so whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. 
and as Team Tardis, at the beginning of your end step, untap each creature you control with any counter on it. And then Yasmin is a 4-mana 3-3 you can tap, exile the top card of your library. Until your next end step, you may play it, and as Doctor's Companion. So when I originally played this commander, I actually changed Yasmin as the partner with him. I really didn't think it'd be good. I thought Yasmin was too slow. And then I realized I'm just wrong, and Yasmin is, I think, the best commander for this, or the best partner with the 13th Doctor out of the box. I, I want to put it above Pantsalaza, because when I did my top 10 video, which you can probably find on screen here somewhere, or just check out the channel after, I haven't I didn't get as many reps with Pantlaza, but I've gotten a lot more now. And I think it I think it's ahead of the 13th Doctor, but just barely. Overall, if you can find this pre-con, I would pick it up. It's really fun. And then finally is Zulodok Void Gorger. This is a six mana seven four legendary creature Eldrazi. Colorless spells you cast from your hand with mana value seven or greater have Cascade Cascade. My friend has this deck. It is really fun. I really enjoyed this deck. I'm gonna put it more so. Um. But the tail end of wanna build. Actually, it's gonna go at the top of very fun. I really like that commander. It a little bit win more, and you're like colorless ramp, so it's pretty obvious. The commander doesn't get to stick around all that long, just because we kind of know what's gonna happen. Uh, if you have a if you have this deck and it's like terrorizing your play group, check out Whirlwind Denial. It's a really great piece of tech to help counter it. You counter all abilities and spells on the stack. So if they cast a big seven drop, you can counter the seven drop and then also counter the cascade triggers, which I have done before. So yeah, I definitely pick up a whirlwind denial against this commander. It's a really, really fun piece of tech. And there you have it. There's my fun tier list for 2023 commanders. Again, these were just the face commanders. Uh, so, you know, it's not a power level ranking. It's just how fun I think they are. There, there's not a single not fun commander. Sliver Grave Mother was the closest, but I mean, I'm gonna put them under kind of fun because I think Encore is a cool mechanic, and I'm sure there's some way to like do some shenanigans with it. But overall, I think a really strong year for pre-cons, like all things considered. Hopefully next year will be just as good, maybe a few less. 25 is definitely a lot of pre-cons this year. And we did have two. Uh, we did have two universes. No, three universes beyond. Two? Doctor Who. Two. Doctor Who and Lord of the Rings. I think we're the only universes beyond Commander Dex this year. Yeah, that's right. It's wild to think that Barks of the Machine came out earlier this year. It's absolutely insane. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want more tier lists like this, definitely let me know in the comments below and give this video a like. I want to hear what your favorite face commander was or just your favorite commander of this year. So many cards came out. You know, it's a wild year for Magic. It's my first full year doing content creation, so I appreciate everyone who's watched the videos. Hopefully I'll be doing some more streams and stuff come 2024. I have some work stuff that came up, so that'll be taking precedent over this for the time being, but I'll still be doing my best to get weekly videos out to all you lovely people. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure so far. Have a happy and healthy new year, and I'll see y'all in the next one.